the world. Our pastor. On your TV, computer, iPad, tablet, and phone. Log on visiontv.co.uk and click on entertainment. Then NTAI. You can also download the iOS or Android app on your mobile device to watch NTA International on the go anywhere in the world. NTA International. Your window to the world. Industry. This government extended the single digit interest rate loans to manufacturers. Inauguration of new Bank of Industry Towers, President Buhari hails Bank's developmental impact. We're working with the Nigerian Air Force, and anytime we're ready to travel, we have, we have to escort the, the train. The federal government strategizes on countermeasures against attacks on rail lines. This project will radically change the trading exchange between the two countries. Nigeria and Niger fine tune cross border insurgency response mechanism. Uh, so, in the past, people have to send their samples to Canada or to South Africa. Now we have a laboratory in Kaduna. They can do own analysis. Also tonight, Minister Lowe's impact of 30 billion Naira Mines Development Intervention Fund. Good evening and many thanks for joining us. This is NTA Network News. We are live in Abuja. And I am Kenan Iba Abodikel Hingana John Adams will be joining us from Lagos. You can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Nigeria and the Republic of Niger have resolved to remain steadfast in their renewed onslaught against insecurity, which continues to undermine efforts at achieving peace and stability in the two countries and the sub-region. This came to light after a high-level engagement between President Mohamed Bugari and his Nigerian counterpart, Mohamed Bazoum, in Abuja. State House correspondent Adamu Sambo reports that the two leaders also discussed issues relating to the economic well-being of the two neighboring countries. This is the first state visit to Nigeria by President Mohamed Bazoum of the Republic of Niger since coming to power on the 2nd of April last year. The reception accorded him by President Mohamed Buhari was warm and indeed befitting. The Nigeria-Niger relations, based on a long common border as well as shared cultural and historical roots, have over the years been robust and very cordial. President Bazoum is here to seek ways and means of deepening and expanding the relations between the two neighboring countries for enhanced social economic well-being. And this dominated the high-level talks with President Muhammad Buhari as well as the two countries' respective delegations held behind closed doors. Speaking to newsmen shortly after, President Bazoum described the talks as fruitful. Uh, Create the conditions of a plus grand stability my visit coincides with a very big operation that is taking place jointly uh, in the lectured Beza region uh, against the terrorists. And this uh, big operation is being conducted by MNJTF, the Multinational Joint Task Force. And as you know very well, um, the operations of the uh, Multinational Joint Task Force is 
um, funded almost entirely by Nigeria. Uh, I want to reiterate my commendation and thanks uh, to President Muhammad Buhari, um, who, because of his uh, support, this operation is going on and it will certainly um, um, uh, help in providing security in addressing the challenges that both countries are facing. I should also mention that we um, have cooperation, uh, defense and military cooperation between, our, between the two countries, uh, but I must also uh, greet uh, the efforts being deployed by the governor of uh, of Zamfara State. And also what happened recently, just a couple of days ago in uh, Kaguna, uh, indicates that there is a change in the level of threats that we are facing. And which means that we have to also define a new strategy to be able to address this threat that is now growing. The Nigerian leader used the opportunity to express his country's formal appreciation to Nigeria for the ongoing Kano Maradi rail project. The integration uh, Des économies du Niger et du Nigeria. And uh, this project is uh, an infrastructure uh, that is that will integrate the two economies, the economies of Nigeria and Niger. I want to thank uh, His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari for his effort for ensuring that this project has taken off, and I hope that it will be sustained because this project will radically change the trading exchange between the two countries. Governor Bello Mohamed Matawali of Zamfara State and his Borno State counterpart, Babagana Zulum, described the joint efforts between Nigeria and Niger to tackle insecurity as appropriate and most ideal. I'm so glad because you had the president of Niger did mention about strengthening the operations of the multinational joint tax force. They are currently operating in the shores of the lake chart. Uh, that means, uh, that boils down to what I've been saying before. I had advocated several times on the use of the platform of the MNJ to depict the insurgents who are hovering on the shores of the lake chart. That operation is now currently undergoing. And I think such kind of operation, operation is needed to ensure that the insurgents are depicted in the, on the, in the shores of the lake chart. Like with that, we have border with uh, Niger Republic. What we are doing is that uh, if we have any information about bandits that coming from either exit Niger, then we are going to push them from Nigeria. Then we allow the Niger security to uh, monitor and push them so that we can collectively fight these uh, criminals. So this is what we are doing day and night in Zampara and Niger Republic. President Mohamed Bazoum has since returned to Niamey, the Nigerian capital city. From Abuja, Adamu Sambo, NTA News. The Bank of Industry has officially been issued a fresh mandate to expand its theater of business operations to all parts of the country. President Mohamed Buhari gave the directive while inaugurating the Bank's Tower 2 building in the central business district of Abuja. The president said the impact of interventions by the financial institution must also be felt across Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Usambo again has the details. Regarded as Nigeria's largest, oldest and most successful development finance institution, the Bank of Industry completed its first 12-story tower building in 2010. This second tower, designed to be sustainable, eco-friendly and futuristic, is also a 12-story building representing the bank's vision for the future that is to, amongst others, promote the emergence and development of a virile and competitive industrial sector in Nigeria. President Muhammad Buhari, who described the world-class edifice as a representation of the bank's contribution to the growing list of work-related infrastructure in the FCT, is particularly elated that it was financed from internally generated revenue. He noted with satisfaction that the Bank of Industry, as a policy institution of the federal government, is successfully executing its mandate of transforming Nigeria's industrial sector. Through Bank of Industry, this government extended the single-digit interest rate loans to manufacturers. In furtherance of this mandate, the Bank of Industry has disbursed over 1.4 trillion naira to over 4.2 million beneficiaries, including micro, small, medium, and large enterprises, creating 
over 9 million jobs from the inception of its ministry in 2015 to date. And to further enhance the capacity of the bank for greater impact on the industrial sector, the president approved the issuance of a sovereign guarantee to help the bank raise funds in the euro bond market. He expressed delight that the bank has recently completed the transaction by raising up to 750 million euros from international investors. The proceeds of this euro bond will be dispersed to large, medium and small enterprises and women entrepreneurs with bankable projects. It is commendable that the bank sources its own funds for lending based on its investment grade ratings by the rating agencies. We want to assure you that we will work harder to achieve more impact in the industrial sector. We have raised close to four billion dollars in the last four years from over 100 international banks and investors from over 20 countries. We believe that in the next few years, we will increase that number to $10 billion. Reconstructed out of the Nigerian Industrial Development Bank in 2001, the Bank of Industry is a signatory to the United Nations Principles for Responsible Banking. It is the first Nigerian development finance institution to do so. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo is pushing for transformation of legal education in Nigeria, calling for development of analytical thinking by problem-solving legal minds. In his message to the Nigerian Bar Association Legal Education Summit, themed Reimagining Legal Education in Nigeria, held at the Afe Baba Lola University at Do Ekiti, Ekiti State, the Vice President said legal education, like many other branches of learning, is designed to evolve and be responsive to the development of society which goes beyond traditional full world classroom learning. He called for the adoption of a hybrid approach to education through extensive use of technology for teaching to decongest overpopulated classrooms in law schools across the country. He recommends that Nigeria should learn from nations that have transformed their legal training through developed structures of periodic review and commended the leadership of the MBA for its consistent investments to improve the legal profession, legal education and the advancement of jurisprudence. While also speaking at the opening day of an international women leadership conference in Lagos, Vice President Yemi Oshimaja urged women in leadership to strengthen synergy by sharing useful skills to speed up development. He said the role of women must go beyond merely breaking glass ceilings to attain global excellence and leadership, not only striving to play and be represented, but to ultimately win. The Vice President highlighted the importance of education, of, of the girl child, gender equity and mainstreaming in politics and other sectors, among other salient issues affecting women. He noted that women breaking glass links in industry and politics is perhaps more important than men doing the same because women who form half of Nigeria's human resources are yet to be fully optimized due to discriminatory practices. Underscoring the growing numbers and influence of women in the Nigerian society, the Vice President acknowledged the significant roles of women as heads and chairs of multilateral and multinational organizations, industry, entertainment, technology and innovation, and successful business owners. Unity and tolerance are crucial values needed to safeguard peace and stability in a multi-religious society like Nigeria, says Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, when he received a delegation of imams, Islamic scholars and Muslim leaders from across the country. State House correspondent Jide Onifade reports. Vice President Yemi Oshimbajo at the meeting noted that until there is engagement with the people, one cannot tell what they and others want. Engagement is so important, I believe very strongly in engagement, he says, narrating his experience since becoming Vice President and how people welcome engagement by their leaders, even in difficult circumstances. 
While expressing his delight at the coming of the delegation, the vice president notes that it is not often that one gets the honor of such a visit. Vice President Oshimbajo urged religious and political elites to show more responsibility in, in ensuring peace and positive changes in society. As the Vice President notes, religious elites, just like the political elites, are responsible for ensuring positive change. The Vice President suggested the creation of a forum of religious leaders who see themselves more on a rescue mission with the purpose of forging more understanding among the citizenry. The members of the delegation speak more on the visit. His Excellency, the Vice President, has always expressed uh, his love for people, regardless of their religion, uh, regardless of their ethnic disposition. And I think uh, these leaders who have come together, who are the leaders of the various organizations and Muslim communities, have come to uh, collaborate, to give advice, to give a lot of input into how we can continue to achieve good governance, uh, the economic development, youth empowerment, and what have you, you know, without being distracted by our religious differences. A mirror of challenges in this country, more especially, which you are all aware, the issue of insecurity. So we have come to ginger the government to work hard and harder to overcome this challenge. The, the, the bandits must not be given the chance to feel elated. Corrupt leaders need to be punished. People need to see corrupt people are punished. That will be the deterrence. To be good bearing, to be just, and not to use the religious sentiments in taking any political decision. The State House, Jideh Onifade. And the news. Now, the Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Sa'ad Abubakar, has called on Muslims to look for the new moon of Ramadan 1443 after Hijra on Friday, 1st April 2022, equivalent to 29th of Sha'aban. This was contained in a statement signed by the Secretary Advisory Committee on Religious Affairs, Sultanate Council of Sokoto, Yahya Muhammad Boyi. The sighting should be reported through the following telephone numbers displayed on the screen. Let's take some messages now. We'll be back shortly. You won't go shake your body. It's that they make you calm down. It's the pump chain, Tabby. You want to grow six parts in a day. You don't do parts in your power. You want to show yourself. Whatever your size, find it with the new Etel data plans. Dial star 141 hash now to get the plan that suits you. Airtel, the smartphone network. Dear friend, how are you? Hmm, I can smell the goodness of Easter around you. But wait a minute, do you know you can enjoy Easter in luxurious comfort like never before? Because this Easter, Bad Mates Furniture invites you to discover new levels of comfort with furniture that brings life to your home. Seriously, now is your last chance to have a memorable Easter and beyond. From 21st March to 20th April 2020. To get furniture you love at unbelievable low prices with free gifts in our showrooms. Hurry now before others choose the finest units you want. For those wondering why Schweppes changes look, experience tells us. <laughs> Change is inevitable. Schweppes, made with over 200 years of experience. It's scary, isn't it? Putting yourself out there, ignoring the voices telling you you can't. Will you step aside or will you go for it? After all, 
what's the worst that could happen? So, keep trying. Don't stop. Believe in yourself and go for it. Pile of data. Available in many variants to nourish you every step of the way. What a lovely couple. Thank you very much, Ma. How can I help you? My madam here wants us to change our mattress. She says it is too firm. It is, oh, very uncomfortable. But I like the mattress. You're always complaining of backache. I'm not even going to mess with you. Oh, no. Don't worry. I have the right mocha for you. Come with me. Mondio Plus. Mm. It's a spring mattress with a comfort layer. It is made with superior bonnet technology, which ensures the spring core doesn't poke through. You will both enjoy it. Ah. Hey babe, hmm? but you're still going to massage my back here. <laughs> been called to host the game show. It's only right to know how it's played. In this game, Emily wants in his constant. Wow. Win some and lose. But you can make it a motivation to win the next challenge. Sweet bastards. And always be right. But nonetheless, you will have lots of fun. I'm Hero Daniels. See you on. Thursday night, just showing Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays only on African Magic, Urban, and Family. Welcome back. Don't forget that you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Uh, following the expiration of the tenure of the former board of the National Directorate of Employment, NDE, President Muhammad Buhari has approved the reconstitution of the new board comprising 15 members. A statement by the presidency indicates that Festus Kiamu, SAN is the chairman of the board as statutorily provided for supervising ministers of the agency. The board will be inaugurated by the supervising minister of the NDE and the minister of state for labor and employment, Mr. Festus Kiamu, SAN, on a date to be communicated to all appointees. Their appointment is for a period of four years. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has inaugurated the board of the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, with a charge on the members to abide by their policy formulation role and not to engage in the day-to-day -day running of the organization. Anthony Forsen has the details. <laughs> Bashir Omolaja Bolarinwa and other members taking their oaths while congratulating the new board members. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed said, Please note that the role of the board of any organization is to formulate policies and not to engage in the day-to-day -day running of the organization. The board is to evolve strategic ways of supporting the commission so it can most effectively deliver its mandate. I therefore enjoy you all to maintain a cordial relationship with the chief executive officer of the commission to engender a smooth working relationship. He however noted that the most important task facing the NBC today is to successfully transition the broadcast industry from analog to digital broadcasting through the digital switchover project. While the NBC is the implementing agency for this all-important project, a ministerial task force on DSO under my chairmanship is driving the project. Regrettably, the minister said the target 
to fast track the DSO launch this year has not been possible. And as the 2023 election draws near, he cautioned that the NBC will come under increased pressure to step up its regulatory role to prevent a repeat of what transpired before during and after the 2019 during elections where broadcast stations threw caution to the wind for the permanent secretary federal minister of information and culture and the director general nbc harped on the expectations from the board the role of its governing board in assisting the commission to effectively discharge its mandate to the nigerian people is of utmost importance i would like to appeal to members of the board that there is need to work together not just work together but to work in harmony to improve the commission there is no need for us to be in any rivalry as we are all going to work toward the same goal for the newly inaugurated board members they said they will carry out their task with all responsibility i couldn't accept with uh, the workers of uh, mbc and uh, most especially the issue of a digital switch over we must try as much as possible to see that the country as the broadcast industry and the country as a whole i achieved the desired objective and the meet up with the set target so most importantly we will keep we will remember at all times that we are going to operate in the best interest of Nigeria as a country and Nigerian people. The board has three years tenure in Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTNU. More federal government-owned enterprises have now been included in the second phase of the Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative in the bid to show up the nation's revenue. Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who disclosed this in Abuja at a one-day event, said the country's revenue to GDP ratio now stands at 9% as of 2021, with an 11% target by the end of 2022. Leah Katung-Babatunde completes the story. The Revenue Growth Initiative SRGI was launched by the federal government in 2019 to identify, develop and implement strategies, projects, policies and initiatives to diversify and boost the revenue base of the country. It targets to achieve 15% revenue to GDP ratio by the year 2050. With the first phase over, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, say government plans to migrate the existing 10 government enterprises into the second phase of the initiative and have now included 55 other enterprises not in the first phase of the program. Continue to work hard, make the necessary sacrifices and take the bold and decisive actions to do things differently, better, more efficient while being mindful that the nation depends on us to generate revenue on a sustainable basis to be able to meet the development needs of our citizens. Accountant General of the Federation, Ahmed Idris, said over 1.2 trillion naira was raised in the first phase of the SRGI implementation. I'm hoping that we will now bring all the remaining 55 federal government owned enterprises on board and uh, to actualize the targeted revenue uh, figure of uh, about 2.33 trillion for 2022. The retreat gave an opportunity to share experiences and ideas as well as update participating agencies of developments in government's revenue generation efforts, collections and remittances. In Abuja, Leah Katimbaba Tune, NTA News. Meanwhile, the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olamileko Adewite, says the federal government has committed over 30 billion naira intervention fund to revitalize the solid mineral sector and to attract foreign investments for the growth and development of the mining industry. The minister said of this during the weekly State House media briefing organized by the presidential communications team. State House correspondent Ali Kabir reports. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Olamile Konadegbite, said the ministry has been engaging in a proactive measures to unlock in the enormous potentials of the mineral resources of the country with emphasis on coal, iron ore, bitumen, gold, 
limestone as well as with zinc and barite. The minister added that the availability of these resources in a commercial quantity out of the 44 mineral sources deposited across the country has necessitated the ministry to ensure that the roadmap of the growth and development of the Nigerian mining industry formulated in 2016 is actualized. The minister also explained that the ministry adopted a proactive approach geared to a strengthening institutions and governance build a strong geoscience base as well as creating an enabling environment and enhancing industry participation. Our research uh, uh, laboratory in Cardinal has been enhanced to world standard. If you find anything, it has to be analyzed. When you dig and go to the ground. Uh, so in the past, people have to send their samples to Canada or to South Africa or at times to Australia so that they can do the analysis for you. What you have found is 50% gold, is 1% uh, sand, this and all that. Now we have a laboratory in Kaduna. It can do all analysis. It doesn't get better than that. Thanks also uh, to President Mohamed Obari. The minister also told journalists that apart from the launch of Made in Nigerian Barite, the ministry also established mine-related clusters in six geopolitical zones of the country, including Goldsmith Factory in Kano, Kowlin Processing Company in Bauchi, Lead Processing Plant in Ebonyi, as well as Barite in Cross River State, among others. This is in addition to the establishment of a jury-making training center in Abuja for the Train the Trainer program with participants from across the country. When we come to minerals, we still have issues with state government thinking that, oh, the minerals in my state belongs to me, and they want to get uh, active in that sector. So what we've done is that states can participate in mining, but not as subnationals, but as corporate. So we encourage state governments to form their own companies and, of course, come and participate. A lot of states have done this. The Minister of Mines and Steel Development assured Nigerians of the government commitment towards complementing and commissioning of all projects including bitumen auction, automation of the mining cadastral system to meet international standards for online mining titles and license application and approval. In the State House, Ali Kabir, NTA News. Now, President Mohamed Bukhari has called for an end to the murders, kidnappings and sexual assaults by rival count groups against their opponents, which have spiraled in states, Ogun State in particular. A statement, in a statement, President Bukhari, who was reacting to reports reaching him on the renewed cult violence with Ogun State as the new battlefront, said the police and other law enforcement agencies must confront head-on groups seeking to destroy peace and bring disorder before they gain strength. It has been reported that the clashes between the AIA and IA cult groups have persisted, lasting for over a week following the killing of key leaders of both groups. Turning out to the National Assembly, where the House of Representatives today offered special prayers during plenary in honor of those killed in recent attacks in parts of the country and for an end to the challenge of insecurity in Nigeria. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that all items on the order paper were also stepped down. Solve all the problems of insecurity. All this we pray the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. The prayer by House members for the repose of the souls of victims of insecurity and for divine intervention climaxed the debate on the security breaches being experienced in the country. A motion of urgent public importance on the need for authorities to address incidents of killings and kidnappings in Birningwari and Giwa in Kaduna State from Shehu Balarebi was the opener of what became an avalanche of lamentations on the state of insecurity in Nigeria. Between 24 March 2022 to 28 March, over 117 people have been killed and some corpses are still yet to be recovered. Giwa has been engulfed by banditry, crisis and killings for the past two, three years. Coincidentally, in a state that we call Kaduna State, where you have the representation and representation of Nigerian military and other security agencies. In Zaria City, kidnappers entered and uh, kidnapped a lot of people. Destroyed a lot of property. Are we saying that the Nigerian army 
the Nigerian Navy, the Nigerian Air Force, the Nigerian police, the TSS, with all the training that they have had, that a ragtag army of 16, 17, 18 year old boys are more powerful than them. That the truth of the matter is security in Nigeria has become a cash cow business. Not too long ago, we were all shouting about the security chiefs. And the president listened and changed all of them. Where are we? Employment of appropriate technology is very key and sine qua non for the success of the fight against insecurity in this country. The federal government to implement as a matter of urgency the resolutions of the security summit that was conducted by this house. Even where the intelligence reports, what happened in terms of the executing agencies? Collaboration, I want to say, is quite very, very low. In sympathy with the families of those we lost in the various incidences, will adjourn the house. All items listed on the other paper were set down in honor of victims of insecurity from the National Assembly. Lami Ali, NCA News. Away from the National Assembly, the federal government is assuring Nigerians that it will do all within its powers to restore confidence in public transportation by boosting the measures to guarantee passenger safety against attacks. Minister of Transportation Chibi Keratimi Amechi gave the indication after visiting the two hospitals in Kaduna where some victims of Monday's train attack are undergoing treatment. Oyina Yakalo Akari posed that the minister assured the victims that the federal government will take care of their medical bills and provide other necessary support. The Minister of Transportation, Chibike Rutimi Amechi, at the 44 Nigerian Army Reference Hospital, interacting with some of the victims who are still struggling with pain and the trauma of their back, but strong and grateful to tell their stories. They entered matching people. They would match old chairs and then swing concepts. And I saw when they here at the 44 Army Reference Hospital in Kaduna, 25 victims were admitted who were affected by the attack. Right now, only seven are remaining. The other ones have been discharged. And some that we also discharge will be followed up in the hospital. So we've told them when they should come back for removal of stitches and to also look at their psychological state. At St. Gerard's Catholic Hospital, out of the 11 patients admitted, 10 have been discharged. Words of encouragement from the minister who thanked the management of the hospitals for their efforts in providing treatment to the patients. He said efforts is on to locate the missing passengers from the attack. Construction work for the repairs of the damaged trucks. He says will commence soon. I'm sure that by the time we finish the repair of the tracks, we should be able to, uh, we would have gotten approval for the security equipment and we would also possibly have installed. But if, even, if, even if we don't install, we've spoken with the Nigerian Air Force and anytime we are ready to travel, they have, we will have to escort the, the train. The visit of the minister, the victims say, rekindled their hope and gratitude to the government. Uyinaya Kalo Oka, NTA News. In another development, the Federal Ministry, Ministry of Transportation has denied media reports making the rounds that the Minister of Transportation, Rutimi Amechi, has asked Nigerians to liaise with hospital management for treatment of the victims of Kaduna train attack. A statement... In a statement, the director of projects of the ministry, Eric Ojekwe, explained that it was a false and misrepresentation, adding that the minister said the Nigerian Railway Corporation to liaise with the hospital management and see how they can contribute for the treatment of patients. Meanwhile, the governor of Kaduna State, Nasir Ahmad Erufar, is calling for the establishment of a military base between Rijana and Qatari in Kaduna, saying it will go a long way in strengthening security along the Abuja-Kaduna train service route. The governor made this known when he received the Minister of Transportation, Chibikaratmiya Meiji, at the government house. Oyinaya Kalwaka once again reports. 
It was a thank you visit to the governor of Kaduna State, Nasser Ahmed El Rafai, for the state government's efforts since the train attack occurred. The visit was an opportunity for both parties to rob mines on the best way to provide security along the routes. The army, the air force, the, the, the police on the ground should just go after these people. We know where their camps are, we know where they are, we have their phone numbers, the SSS listens to the conversation there and they give me the reports. I get reports regularly that say that this is about to happen. This is this is being planned. We know where these people are. Why are we waiting for them to attack and then we respond? Why can't we go after them? We are in a state of war. They need to review the timing of the train movement to exclude evening ride from 6 p.m. was suggested by the governor. The last train from Abuja to Kaduna and the last train from Kaduna to Abuja should leave by 4 o'clock so that it gets to its destination in daylight. That way, if anything is to happen, the response of the security agencies will be in 30 minutes, will be faster. Oyinaya Kalo Oka, ANTA News. Nigeria must be firm despite initial challenges in the journey to energy transition. Executive Secretary of Nigerian Content Development and Monitoring Board Simbi Wabote gave the advice at the 2022 edition of the Olayibiri Lecture Series in Abuja. Mia Ogidi reports. Olayibiri, a community in the swampy mangroves in Bayelsa State, hosting the first oil well some 68 years ago, a well that for a long gone dry. The library is still active in the nation's oil and gas industry. Society of Petroleum Engineers for years now organizes the library lecture series. 2022 edition focuses on global energy transition, implications on future investment in Nigeria's oil and gas industry. Executive Secretary, Nigeria Content Development and Monitoring Board, Simbi Wabote, one of the guest speakers, and for him, energy transition comes naturally and such provides opportunity for indigenous companies to show their prowess. The divestment case has brought about a bittersweet experience for countries like Nigeria. On one hand, the divestment has resulted in the emergence of indigenous companies playing a major role in exploration and production activities. On the other hand, divestment of the IOCs and their reluctance to make further investment in the oil and gas have resulted in the repatriation of capital out of Nigeria. We believe that trading and development is the single most important enabler which can be used to realize the goals and aspirations of this transition. For the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, solutions to energy poverty is collective. We need to consolidate our resources develop cross-border infrastructure, and expand regional energy market to guarantee long-term energy security. Quite revealing discussions from sound minds in the industry. Sound and actionable solutions also expected at the end of this year's series. Mie Ogidi, NTNews. The federal government has yet again extended the deadline for the national identification number, name verification and SIM card linkage by a few days after the March 31, 2022 deadline expired. Chim Deman DBC reports that the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy is urging Nigerians to use the new window to complete the exercise before the enforcement of sanctions on the voters commences. It was initially December 30th, 2020, that the federal government gave as deadline for the national identification number NIN verification and SIM card linkage. Since then, deadlines have been extended each time it elapses. This time around, the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy has given Nigerians yet to register grace to do so within a few days. The National Identity Management Commission has also been directed to work around the clock to ensure that those yet to be registered and verified are captured. Going by statistics from the Identity Management Agency, more than 77 million Nigerians at home and 118,529 in the diaspora have so far been registered. Yes, I have uh, registered for me, which is important for every citizen to 
be properly numbered. Some of my kids are yet to be registered. Even those that are registered, there were a lot of mistakes on their names. And that, that mistake that he did on that name is causing a lot of problem. Before you should change that name, you spend a lot of money. However, there are questions hinting on the likelihood of the National Identity Management Commission being able to clear backlogs of name data sent by telecommunication companies with a stipulated deadline. That's aside other issues concerning technical hitches in Abuja, Chimdema Dubisi, NTE News. Hang it out, check it up now for some reports from Lagos. Thank you, Kenne. The Strategic Revenue Growth Initiative of the federal government aimed at growing the nation's tax net for the development of infrastructural projects serves as a mechanism to drive sustainable economic growth. Minister of State for Budget and National Planning, Claire Magbar, stated this at the opening ceremony of a two-day corporate retreat for senior management staff of the Federal Inland Revenue Service held in Lagos. Abola reports. Revenue is critical as it determines to a large extent how much money is available for spending by government. This meeting with top management from the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, therefore becomes necessary for the service to generate innovative ideas through its tax administration strategies for improved service delivery geared towards sustainable economic development. Minister of State for Finance, Budget and National Planning, Clem Magba, who commended the performance of the service, said government has been able to execute a number of projects across the country through revenue collection from the non-oil sector. He stressed on the need to enhance the ease of doing business in Nigeria and make it pleasant for taxpayers to pay their taxes. It, it means that the our strategic uh, revenue growth initiative efforts is working, you know, and will continue to work. And the government is responsive in ensuring that what is collected is used for infrastructure. Executive Chairman Federal Inland Revenue Service noted that the service is repositioning to deliver 60% of revenues for budget implementation for future planning. The key option that we have as a nation is for us to be able to mobilize our own resources, utilize those resources for the good of our people, and that is the reason why we're here. And we are going to tell ourselves the truth that the only way out for government today is for us to perform. The meeting is aimed at consolidating on the gains of FIRS reforms and prefer solutions for governments in tackling current fiscal challenges. In Lagos, Abola de Salami, NTA News. More than 600 packages of military wares, including stun guns and army uniforms, valued at 380 million naira, have been handed over to the Nigerian army after they were intercepted at the narco shed of the Murtala Mohammed Airport in Lagos. The customs area controller at the command, Sambo Dangala Dima, says the searchlight of the agency will always fish out importers of unwholesome goods due Due to high premium placed on the security of the nation. Michael Olale reports. Anybody can rob you with this. Jesus. Anybody can intimidate you with this. And this type of things must have clearance from Nigeria Army. Hmm. Look at what they wrote there, US Army. Although a stunned gun, but the Constance believes importation of this nature creates a safe haven for crimes to be perpetrated or abated because aided with the use of army uniform also contained in the packages, it will be difficult for unsuspecting Nigerians to differentiate between a real and fake military officer. Along with 679 sets of drones, the seizures intercepted about three months ago were handed over to the Nigerian army. Military equipment, uniforms are not supposed to be brought in without authorization from the military. So bringing in those illegal things will be a waste of time because at the end of the day, they will be received, they will be seized. These bags of tea are not mere tea, but dry carts found in East Africa and parts of the Arabian Peninsula. In the recent of it, the customs classified them as stimulants and 78 packs worth 377 million naira were intercepted. By the time you take this one, you'll be sleeping, you'll be, you'll be lazy. 
You know, you can think of anything. And that is why we keep on having this banditry and uh, arm robbers all over. Close to 5,000 tablets of Tramadol imported with 34 airway bills from Indian, Addis Ababa and Hong Kong intercepted were also handed over to the NDLEA. What we are seeing here shows that this collective quest for a drug-free Nigeria can actually be a reality. We can all come together and make sure that we do the rise of society from the whiff of illicit drugs. Pharmaceutical drugs, including injections imported from India and Pakistan, were handed over to NAVDAC due to the absence of registration number and other required classification. With the handing over done, it is now the responsibility of the concerned agencies to carry out investigations towards unraveling corporates and their collaborators. In Lagos, Michael Olaleye, NT News. Time now for our second break, but before we go on that break, we would like to remind you to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on YouTube at NTA News Online. You can also visit our Facebook page at NTA Network News, Twitter handle at NTA News Now and on Instagram at NTA Network for updates. <laughs> Oh, I see this gonna happen wearing the suit there. Yeah, <laughs> 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 give me small new number now. Uh, romance without finance now, annoyance. Better give me ball. Eh? Yeah, give me the number. So you yeah, draw the number down. 0805. Uh -huh. ah. Where the complete number? So we're so hot, like the guys are gonna need juice, so just like juice it. Yes. Hey, oh yeah, give me last numbers. My five password. Mm. Four one I give you. <laughs> oh yeah, seven six five zero. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Find your first. Choose a social data bundle that suits your style. Dial star triple seven hash below unlimited. When times are tough, we know that as a mother, one thing you should never compromise on is your family's oral health because they deserve the best. Oral B, all round protection. It's great value. It protects your mouth from harmful bacteria and also protects you against tooth holes and gum problems which can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your family's teeth and gives them all round protection. So remember, protect their future. Oral B, for healthier, stronger teeth in just one week. When you think of fruit juice and all the goodness that comes in it, think Chivita. It is many years of trust, quality, and all the goodness of fruit poured into one lovely pack, specially made for you. There is more to choose from. Whatever your preferences are, there is a Chivita for you. If you love an active life, or you just want to relax and unwind. If you are the cool dude. Or simply want to try something refreshingly different. However you want it. There is a Chivita for you. Oh. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Check out our new Chivita Smart Malt Drink. Energy to learn. Energy to play. So, what's your Chivita? Go TV price don't go down low for inside much for less promo. Then go summer you with Go TV decoder. Go tenner plus one month max subscription. Package will be 9,500 naira before before. They don't slash up to 6,500 naira. <laughs> See discount. <laughs> Make yourself enjoy football for inside your house. Cross leg what Africa magic come play Niger Tendi Novella. Nigerian idol and no bonga drama. Yourself is so big with max for less promo. And enjoy correct entertainment for only 6,500 naira. So make you hurry. Visit Go TV store today. This offer not be forever. Go TV. Love it. Thank you for staying with us. Benny Adams will now bring us business news. Thank you, Kenny, and welcome to business. The Central Bank of Nigeria is partnering financial institutions to make additional funds available for businesses towards increasing Nigeria's participation in international trade. 
The Apex Bank Governor was joined by the Minister of Trade in the call for more financing at the inauguration of the BOI New Tower in Abuja. And not just make finance available to Nigerians, but also make this finance available at affordable interest rates. That we have been able to approach the international capital market and concluded various funding transactions. And the most recent one, the 750 million euros, senior euro bond. This deal represents BOI's first euro bond, the provision of Nigeria's first euro bond guarantee, as well as the first euro dominated bond transactions from Nigeria creating a benchmark for other prospective issuers from Africa. The Bank of Industry has disbursed more than 1.24 trillion naira to 4.2 million beneficiaries in micro, small, medium and large companies and creating more than 9 million jobs in the last seven years. And to the capital market, investors gained 32.87 billion naira as all share index appreciated by 0.13 points to close at 46,965.48 basis points. Market capitalization stood at 25.311 trillion naira. 256.202 million shares valued at 3.6 billion naira swapped hands in 4,227 deals. Market breadth closed a negative. And we have Fidelity, USCN, and Chums as the most active to boost market turnover. That is business news. Network news continues after this break. Every Sunday on Africa Magic Urban and Family. Probably sponsored by Biggie Drinks, Nigel's favorite, and Binance. Exchange the world. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being a bull boy, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's train hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. The Federal Safety Commission has approved the appointment of two assistant corps marshals ACM to the rank of Deputy Corps Marshal DCM, four corps commanders CC to the rank of Assistant Corps Marshal ACM, 39 Deputy Corps Commanders DCC to the rank of Corps Commander CC and 64 Assistant Corps Commanders ACC to the rank of Deputy Corps Commanders. Others include 57 Chief Root Commanders promoted to Assistant Corps Commanders, 132 Superintendent Root Commanders to Chief Root Commanders, as well as 427 Root Commanders elevated to the rank of Superintendent Root Commander. In addition, the Commission also approved the promotion of 317 Deputy Route Commanders to the rank of Assistant Route Commander, as well as 76 Assistant Route Commanders to the rank of Deputy Route Commander. 
others who were elevated with the mandate to proceed on term to leave uh, to assist the commercials appointed to the rank of the commercials. That concludes Network News tonight. Thanks indeed for watching. Remember to join the NTA in the fight against rape and rapists. I am Kenan Ima Aborike. Do have a good night.